So my objective whenever I encounter any stocks is to as quickly as possible reject the idea so I can get back to general reading. Uh, so the model is not to find investments. The model is to find the flimsiest reason to say no, and as soon as I get to the first reason, I'm done and I move on. And uh, usually uh, two things work pretty well for getting rid of stocks really fast. The first is circle of competence. You know, you encounter, like, I mean, if I look at some pharma company or something, uh, it's gone. I mean, I, you know, I don't even need to look beyond the name, it's gone. Um, and the second is that if I, if I think I have some understanding of the business, then the second is uh, I look at uh, very quickly uh, the, the market cap, earnings, just some, some metrics on valuation, and I'm talking about less than 60 seconds. Um, and once I see that it's not at a P of one, uh, it's gone as well. So, uh, so basically, uh, we want to, or at least I want to get rid of investment ideas for the flimsiest reasons as quickly as possible. And let's say some, some stock uh, is really cheap, it, it appears to be within my circle of competence, uh, then for one minute I'll go to five minutes. You know, I'll give it five minutes, and again, to find something where I can just get rid of it. And if I cannot get rid of it in five minutes, then I'll give it 15 minutes. And all these exercises are designed, and designed to get rid of the stock as soon as possible. And the inversion of that is that I'm only looking for, if I can find two or three ideas in a year, I'm done. And uh, I mean, Justin, I think in daily emails, which I get in my folder, I think on a typical day, there are like at least three or four stock tips in that folder. And within the 900 seconds of processing the folder is those four stock tips. Uh, each of them gets you know 15 seconds because I just look at the company I look at the price and I very quickly try to see, okay, what is this guy saying? Is the money we're gonna make on it? And you know, a lot of times the stocks I get, oh, you know, it's trading at 10 and it's worth 13. And then, you know, there's a 40 page write up explaining why it's 13. Well, once I see it's worth 10, I say, okay, I'll, I'm gonna give this human full benefit of doubt. I'll accept that it's worth 13. Uh, and he didn't say it's worth 60 with it trading at 10, so we're done move on. And uh, so that's how, so basically, be a very harsh grader on stocks. And the second thing about this business is, I don't, you know, you guys don't play pay baseball, but I think maybe you're familiar enough with the game that Buffett says, in investing, there are no call strikes. So, you know, baseball, three strikes are out. In investing, you can let a thousand balls go by, 10,000 balls go by. You can let 95% of great investment ideas go by and it doesn't matter. So there's always more balls being pitched at you. And uh, so if in a year you can find three of them, and, uh, and even after finding three of them, if one of them is, you're wrong on one of them, like one of the commandments says, that's just par for the course, it doesn't matter. If you're right two or three times, you'll be quite wealthy. Um, and uh, you know the, the scuttlebutt or the amount of time it takes or the due diligence to get comfortable with the investment, uh, that varies quite widely. Uh, I mean, it's been as short as three hours from the time I first ever heard about a company to a time I started buying it uh, to three months uh, where, you know, like I think when we made the investment in Fiat Chrysler in 2012, I hated that industry so much. I kept trying to find reasons not to invest. And after three months of digging, I capitulated uh, and, and bought it. And uh, it's been an 8X since then. Uh, so, um, so basically the, the thing is it, it varies. It just depends on the business. Um, the good thing is that if you run a concentrated portfolio and if you're going to make uh, two or three investments in a year, you have more than enough time, especially if you're quick to say no and you don't spend time with other humans, 
uh, you have more than enough time to basically do all the research you want to, um, you know, you know, even even uh, kick the tires as you want to, and and so on. So, uh, so that's the uh, that's the Buffett model, and uh, so you know, I think many of the things you'll hear or you'll see with uh, the way I operate. First of all, all of these were copied from Warren, so I didn't come up with any of these. But it is not the way the industry operates. Uh, the, and in my opinion, the indus industry operates stupidly. Um, and, uh, and, and so, you know, many things, no team, no management fees, um, doing all your own work, concentrated portfolios, all of these things, uh, you know, this is the path to nirvana. And uh, that's what you want to be uh, getting to, and that's what you want to be doing. If we had a perfect crystal ball, and which told us what the risk-free rate of return is going to be uh, for the next 20 years, uh, then that would give you a basis to come up with a discount rate. Um, that would be the right way to do it. But we don't have crystal balls that tell us that. And uh, Charlie Munger also says that He's never ever seen Warren do a discounted cash flow. You know, I already told you, uh, thou shall not use Excel. I know that in your time at LBS, you have never turned on Excel, and I'm so proud of you. Uh, so, uh, so the the thing is that uh, we are not really going to fixate on stupid things like discount rates. Uh, what we want is obvious no-brainers hitting us over a head, over the head with, in the U.S., what we would call a two-by-four, uh, you know, something you'd buy at, buy at Home Depot. Um, so basically, you know, when I was looking at, let's say, Fiat Chrysler in 2012, I've never run a DCF. I mean, I think DCFs are, you know, for the, for the birds. Um, I mean, the market cap of the company was $5 billion. And I thought in maybe five, six years, they'd make five billion a year. And I said, okay, why don't we just buy the company and hold it for five years? And let's see what Mr. Market will price this business at when it's making five billion a year. I'd really like to see it being priced at five billion then and uh, you know, be the cheapest stock on the planet. And um, so that was, the, that was the extent of the DCF that was done. And, um, and so basically what we're looking for is we're looking for very obvious, no-brainers, uh, wildly mispriced, uh, severely undervalued opportunities. That's what we're looking for. And we want to be harsh greater than say no to everything else. Mm -hmm.